Let's see who's got a fish. Coyote, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 I see him. If we can actually land one of these creatures, it's gonna boggle your mind. Got it! <laughs> We've got a bowfin. Hiding beneath the plant-strewn surface of this vast wetland lurks a swamp monster that is capable of striking with incredible speed. I can sense that you think this is another episode about the notorious snapping turtle, but it's not. This ancient being is armed with a mouthful of needle-like teeth. And trust me when I say that this creature is unlike anything we have featured before. Welcome. West Virginia's Green Bottom Swamp. This location is shrouded in lore, and my good friend, wildlife expert Tim Brust, for years has been telling me about the monsters living amongst the watery shadows. Tim is a man of his word, and I believe the tales he tells. But catching one of these supposed monsters is going to require a tactic we have never featured on the Brave Wilderness Channel. A fishing pole. Okay, we've got a short walk down to the edge of a marsh. We're going after a true swamp monster in the fish kingdom, something known as a bowfin. This is a very ancient looking fish species. In fact, its lineage dates back 150 million years. If we can actually land one of these creatures, it's gonna boggle your mind. Right now, Tim is getting all of the rods and reels set up. He's gonna technically be our fisherman today. I'm gonna to be the net man. This is really a two person job when it comes to landing a bowfin. To actually reel one of these fish in is very difficult. The hook doesn't fully set in the fish's mouth. They're really clamped onto that bait. So it can really let go at any point. You wanna reel it in as slow as you possibly can. And when it gets close, there I will be waiting in ambush, almost like this fish does to catch its prey. And with the net, I will hopefully be able to scoop it up and we'll get it under control. Uh, we just have a basic spinner rod here with about 12 to 15 pound test on it. Uh, because we're not really fighting the fish, we're just gonna to try to lure them in so we can get them with a the net. And we've got a circle hook attached to the bait and we have a bobber and that's about all you need. Just have to find right habitat and if the fish are there, you'll catch them. With two lines in the water, it's now a matter of being patient as Tim is confident it won't be long before the smell of our fresh bait permeates the underwater labyrinth of swamp plants. Okay, now we wait. That is the skull of a bowfin. And it's essentially like a helmet. It is completely constructed of bone, but what you definitely notice are those incredibly long, sharp teeth. And when I say I don't want to be bitten by bowfin, that is exactly why. And their mouths can gape open significantly to swallow down their prey whole. But if you get your fingers stuck in that mouth and this fish spins, it's going to be a very painful and very bloody end to this episode. And these plates here that look like shields are called the operculum. That actually covers up and protects the fish's gills. So if a predator comes in and tries to make a meal out of one of these creatures, they have a very tough time getting through that skull. Such a primitive fish. Considered a taxonomic relic, the bowfin is the sole surviving species of the order Amiformes, which dates back to the Jurassic period. And while they've certainly evolved since swimming in the presence of dinosaurs, they're still considered primitive fish. Bobber just went down. I think we got something. Bobber's definitely down. Yeah, we might have something here. I gotta grab, grab the net. It's right here. Okay. So stand up here at this point. Okay, yeah, we definitely have something. This is crazy. Okay, we might have a boat in. We got this, Tim. Let's hope it's a bowfin fish and not a snapping turtle. I guess that's another one of the threats we could catch snapping turtles. Definitely could be a snapping turtle. Oh, is it off? Yeah, I think it's off. Oh, it's off. And we still got the bait. No, it must have been a bowfin. If it was a snapping turtle, we definitely yeah. would not have the bait. Oh, that was our first bowfin. 
That's a bummer. Definitely our first bow fin on. Well, cast back out. We know they're biting. That's a good sign. Awesome. Remember, setting a hook in the mouth of a bow fin is unlikely, which means that if we have a fish on the line and it gets tangled in the weeds, all it has to do is spit out the bait and we will lose our chance to safely net it. All right, let's see who's got a fish. Still on? Here, come on, Cody, come on, come on. Come out here, I want you to stand up here. Look like a decent fish. Yeah, 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 I see. All right, don't move, just don't move. Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Hey, just let go. Yes, yes, we got one. <laughs> this is fantastic. We've got a bow fin. Wow, good size, Tim. Well done, Tim. All right, I am literally walking through the sticks of a beaver dam right now. All right, let me get back over here. Woo! We got one. Check it out. There is the bowfin. Wow, what a cool, cool looking fish. <laughs> How about that? That is the bowfin. Now they get the name bowfin from the really long fin that runs down the dorsal length of the fish's back. But you'll notice that the tail very closely resembles the shape of the head. That's a sort of defensive mimicry. So if a predator comes in and bites onto this fish, they may bite the tail instead of the head, giving the fish the opportunity to propel itself forward and escape. Now you can see there's several chomps out of the tail of this fish. That could quite possibly be from a common snapping turtle, another one of the dominant predators here in this wetland ecosystem, or it may even be from a male bowfin. During breeding season, they will sometimes battle against each other for the rights to a breeding territory. But one other aspect about this fish that's very cool is that the males are actually the ones responsible for parental care. Not only will they guard the nests and eat anything that comes close, but they will actually take care of the young until they're about four inches in length. So when it comes to the fish world, this is definitely what you consider a good papa. Now there's a difference between the males and the females. The females are a bit larger, so I'd likely say that this is a female. And that is a big, big bowfin. I'm gonna get my measuring tape. I would say that this fish is all of 23 inches in length. That is definitely what you would consider a full-grown bowfin. You can see there, its mouth opening and closing and its gills flapping. It's actually taking in gulps of air right now. And that's one of the most unique things about these fish is that they're capable of breathing not only underwater, but above the water as well. In shallow water, these fish can survive for an extended period of time and they will secrete a very slippery mucus from their skin to keep them hydrated in a completely almost dried up situation. Wow, and you can see all of the slime dripping off of its body. In fact, they can even slither up and over short periods of land. Like if they're in a body of water that begins to dry up and they need to scoot themselves over land to get to a bigger body of water, this fish is capable of staying hydrated and of breathing through that process. See that right there? That was a gulp of air. All right, let me let this fish back down into the water. They have a lateral line that runs down the length of their body, which helps them to feel vibrations in the water. Now, the bowfin is an ambush predator. They will lie in wait in the weeds, wait for something like a smaller fish, a tadpole, a frog to swim by, then they will dart out, engulf it in that large mouth, swallow it down, and then tuck back down into the weeds. What a cool and alien looking fish. I'm so excited that we got one. I'm gonna lift it up one more time very gently here. I know, it's about time for you to get back into the swamp. How cool was that? Getting up close with one of the most primitive fish species on our planet, the bowfin. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, let's get this fish back into the swamp. In the swampy realms of the eastern United States, the bowfin rules as one of our planet's most primordial creatures. And their ability to survive beyond the time of dinosaurs has made them one of my favorite all-time fish species. Once considered a nuisance, it's now been proven by ichthyologists that these predators are a very necessary part of the food chain as they help maintain an important balance within the ecosystem. So while they may be rather uneasy on the eyes, 
and certainly aren't considered a fish fry favorite. If you happen to find one on the end of your line, watch out for their teeth and do your best to safely release these prehistoric relics back into the wild. Hey Coyote Pack, if you thought the bowfin was an impressive river monster, make sure to go back and watch the episode where I noodled a 50 pound blue catfish out of the muddy depths of the Tennessee River with my bare hands. And don't forget, subscribe and join memberships so you can brave alongside me and the crew on our next wild adventure.